نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساءة من يتع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فلا يذب إلا نفسه أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفكر قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورقنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورقنا اجتنابا اللهم ألهمني نشت وعزني من شر نفسي يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Today inshallah I want to discuss a very important topic especially for the youth and that is the topic of atheism versus the topic of existence of God. I'm not going to prove that God exists. This is not the subject I'll be discussing. But what I will be discussing is the fairy tales in science. Now you'll be surprised, what do I mean by fairy tales in science? So please listen to me carefully. <coughs> When we discuss science, many of you have experienced reading science books, a lot of times certain words are used and they are accepted blindly <coughs> as an explanation of in itself, an intrinsic explanation of itself. Let me explain what I'm trying to say. For example, we say the laws of physics. The laws of physics do this, or the laws of nature do this, or we say evolution does this. These words, laws of physics, nature, evolution, they're not cognizant entities in themselves. They don't make decisions in themselves. Mother nature is not an entity that's cognizant that makes intelligent decisions in itself. So when we say nature does this, or the laws of physics do this, or the laws of thermodynamics are this, or we talk about any other law that's present in nature, we talk about those laws as if they're intelligent entities doing that. Let's take a very good example that every, especially every college student would be aware of. If we take the example of evolution, we say, well, evolution does this, or evolution did this. But evolution is not an entity that really exists. It's a process that it exists. It's not an entity. It's not a being that exists. So just as we take things, we take things blindly in science also when we say evolution did this. You believe in an entity that is not intelligent to have made intelligent decisions throughout history to come to a... Uh, what some philosophers would call a teleological conclusion or a, a, a positive outcome towards something positive. Evolution itself is not something that's intelligent. But we use the words, we have, science has replaced certain words with the word God. So instead of saying God does this, we say Mother Nature does this. Instead of saying God did this, we say evolution did this. Instead of saying this is how God runs the universe. We say physical laws are based upon these laws. But these physical laws in themselves are not an entity of intelligence. They're in fact all of these entities, whether it is Mother Nature or whether it is evolution or whether it is, uh, whether it is the laws of physics or the laws of chemistry or the laws of thermodynamics or the laws of, of, of any other field of science, all of these entities are essentially blind and not intelligent. They are processes, they are not intelligent entities. 
And also, you know, it is human nature because we ask ourselves, why does Qur'an give us so many stories? This is a very important point. So, <clears throat> and, and there's another misconception. And another misconception is that we feel because we've come... Let me give a little bit of history here so that we understand. And something I learned recently is actually quite interestingly related to this. But one point I want to make before I make this point is that human beings need a story. Listen to what I'm saying carefully. We need a story. Either a story by science, whether it was the Big Bang and then evolution and, and, and here we are, that's one story. Or you have another story which was that Allah created Adam, He created Eve, and then the, the tree thing happened, we came down on earth, and then the prophets were sent, and then here we are. Either what, whether you are looking at science, or whether you're looking at religion, you are looking at the human need to create a meta story, a meta narrative, that where did we come, why are we here? Where did we come from and why are we here? That's the story that human beings need to make. And so whether science gives it to you in one form or whether religion gives it to you in another form, the main thing I'm trying to say is it's a human need to have some sort of story, a meta-narrative that explains our existence and why we're here. This is human, this is, every human being needs this. So science or religion or philosophy does not work outside the, the, the realm of human needs or human tendencies. So I've made two points, first of all. First, and before I go to the third point. First point I made is that religion gives certain names to certain entities that are blind processes and we accept them in blind faith that those, meaning within the field of science, we accept that these blind entities, or when we read about them, we read about them as if these blind entities are actually intelligent entities, when in fact everybody knows that these are not intelligent entities. A very good example would be the study of evolution. Evolution itself is not intelligent, but evolution is what? Evolution is just a process that is essentially blind. But we live in a world where we believe that the majority of the scientists, that majority of the intelligent people are all atheists. Actually, this is a big misnomer. This is not based upon reality. This used to be based upon reality. As Albert Einstein, I believe, said, uh, that a little bit of science takes you away from God, but a deep study of science brings you towards God, which we were looking at, at some of these... You take any major scientist in the world, from Albert Einstein to music. I, I have a friend in North Carolina. He did his master's degree on Newton. He did his master's degree on Newton. You take any major scientist, you'll be amazed that how much, how much religious austerity scientists that are main figures of scientists, not people who piggy bank on Charles Darwin, who believed in God, and then use evolution as a source to prove that there's no God. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Uh, the person who created microbiology, the person who created uh, the, the, the laws of thermo thermodynamics, Albert Einstein, with all his theories, uh, Robert, I think his name is Robert Boyles, all of these guys on which modern science rests, majority of them all believed in God. But the people that piggy bank on them, who ride them, act as if, oh no, because now evolution explains everything, we don't need God. So I want to go over just a few quotations and then I'm going to discuss something very important. We have to understand historically. Here, I want to share with you two more things before I actually go into the quotations. <clears throat> First, how did the world get here? The world believed in God. And then now the world was not believing. We were a God, becoming a godless society. How did the world come here? In Europe, the church had certain rules and rituals, and when people like Galileo and others, they discovered things in space that went against 
the teachings of the Bible, they would be censored, they would be hurt, they would be abused. And so what happened is the people that were intelligent, they concluded from that that, you know what, religion, we don't need religion. We don't need religion because religion censors us and it censors the truth. So how can religion be the truth? And I just want to quote to you somebody very interesting who's written a paper who, who says this very interesting. And if you just remember, just if you just follow me for a second, Surah Al-Kahf, which is the surah of, you can say, the postmodern times. The surah that deals with the Dajjal, the Antichrist. The surah starts off, the second theme of the surah is Christianity. They say Allah has adopted a son. They have no knowledge of it, nor their forefathers. They say nothing but lies. Because of Christianity, intelligent peoples, what they, because the only religion they knew was Christianity, but they assume because Christianity is wrong, therefore all religions must be wrong. And so one author writes, I'll read to you. <clears throat> Properly read, the Bible is the most potent force for atheism ever conceived. When, uh, when, and then it goes on. But this is the quote I want to begin to you. The problem is that because of the misinformation within the Bible, so many unscientific things within the Bible, because of so many contradictory things in the Bible, historical indiscrepancies within the Bible. And I'm not criticizing Christianity. I'm just trying to make a historical point here. This is a historical fact, what I'm mentioning. And that is because of the problem of the Bible, people left religion. And specifically, intelligent people left religion. And because of the Bible and because of Christianity, there was a reaction to this. And the reaction was, for the next 500 years or so, Towards, because only for the for 500 years after that there was only philosophy, there was no science. But as we got from philosophy to science, starting with the first group of scientists, whether you start with Newton, because he's amongst the first major scientists, or you even go back to Charles Darwin, all of them, all of the major scientists on which science rests upon, they believe in God. So this is a misnomer that if you're really intelligent, you're going to be an atheist. And it's a misnomer to think that, oh, science rests on the shoulders of people who don't believe in God. As I will share with you some of these things. And so now let's go back and mention the main points I mentioned. Number one, I said that science mentions certain statements. For example, evolution, laws of physics, laws of nature, laws of chemistry, so on and so forth. All these laws. For example, let's take one in biology, for example. The, the phenomenon of aging, for example. Your age, right? This is a phenomenon mentioned in Quran at least twice. The, the fact that you age. Your hair becomes white. Your, the, 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 your skin's uh, ability to go back to its place uh, becomes less. <laughs> Your, your skin becomes more wrinkly. The process of aging is a biological process that takes place. The fact that this process takes place, uh, there are two points I want to make here. One's a side small point that it's interesting, the process of aging, because it goes against everything evolution stands for, which is survival of the fittest, that inherently we have the process of aging, starting with ourselves and then to other aspects of ourselves. But the bigger point I wanted to make was, is that, Let's take any process within the human body, right? If we ask ourselves, where did these, did these processes, were these processes intelligent themselves or did they come from some intelligent design? This is the question I'm trying to ask. And not only that, but I, I, I wish I had time to go even further than that, but what I would like to, so the first point I wanted to make was when science books talk about science and scientific phenomenon, they use words of forces that are blind that did something. Like evolution did this. But evolution itself is blind. Laws of physics in itself is blind. 
Mother Nature in itself is not an intelligent being that did anything. Second point that I made is that every human being has to construct what in, in philosophy they call it the meta narrative. You have to construct a story. You have to make a story. There has to be a story. Whether the science, it is the science, story of science, there was a big bang and then evolution, or whether you believe in the story of Adam and Eve and then this is how we came with the prophets over here, the human need is to have a story. And so no matter what, science is biased by the human need to create a story. Not only is it biased by that, but it's biased by a lot of other things, which I'll go into uh, if I have time. The third thing I mentioned is the historical process on which atheism rests. It rests as a reaction to Christianity, but then, like I said, as one of the scientists said, that a little bit of science will take you away from God, but a lot of science will bring you back to God. Another scientist, which we'll read, said, if you, if you, if you drink the cup of science, and these are not just any scientists, I'm talking about Nobel Prize winners, big names. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and go into that right now. Just a few quotes. And because then that will establish some of the points that I want, that I've already made, and it will also establish more points that I want to make. Um, Charles Darwin, okay, the founder of evolutionary biology, cites in his book *The Descent of Man*. The question of whether there exists a creator and ruler of the universe has been answered in the affirmative by the highest intellectuals that have ever, ever existed. This is what he said. Okay. Next quote by Albert Einstein. The more I study science, the more I believe in God. Next quote. Another one by Albert Einstein. I want to know how God created this world. In fact, it's a very famous uh, event in Albert Einstein's uh, life. They were, uh, you know how light goes straight. But Albert Einstein had a theory. He had an equation that showed that light will not go straight where space is curved. Now, where space is curved is how Albert Einstein understood gravity. Newton understood gravity to be, if you pick up an apple, the apple falls. But Albert Einstein understood gravity in a totally different perspective. He felt that gravity is a curvature in, in, in physics. It's a curvature in the spheres. So he said, uh, okay, let's test if light bends. He believed that light would bend when it comes close to gravity. And when they did the experiment and they saw, yes, light does bend as it gets closer to gravity. Then he said the famous st statement, yes, I believe God does not play dice. So that's one of his famous statements. Anyway, uh, so he said, I want to know uh, how God created this world. I'm not interested in this or that phenomenon in the spectrum of this or that element. I want to know his thoughts. The rest are details. Um, there is uh, another very important scientist, but I'm just going to read a part of his... Uh, his name is Paul Davies. He has also made a lot of comments. He's, a, he's not a Nobel Prize winner, but he's won a lot of, a lot of other scientific awards, like from the Royal Science Society. He, he won an award, uh, and then also he won a... Firm, uh, there's a famous physicist, um, uh, Faraday uh, Prize, he won in 2002. He says, the laws of... the law... the nature... nature... Uh, Natural laws of, of physics are simply accepted as given and as brute force. We accept forces of, like, for example, things happen in the universe as brute force. If you pick something up, it'll fall. We know that. But just by saying the word gravity doesn't explain how those laws came into existence. If you say the word gravity, gravity is something, is one of the most ununderstood phenomenons in, 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 in science even today. But I'm not going to go into that right now. We can have that discussion later. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make here is that... Okay, let's take another quote. Uh, this is... His name is William Calvin. Everybody's heard of Calvin. Calvin zero, right? Calvin in physics. Okay, I believe that the more thoroughly science is studied, the further it takes us down anything comparable to atheism. If you study science deep enough and long enough, it will force you to believe in God. Uh, Albert Einstein calls people that don't believe in God, God, the fanatical atheists are like slaves who are still feeling the weight of their chains, etc., etc., etc. I don't have time to go over all of this. 
Uh, Al, uh, Isaac Newton says, God created everything by number, weight, and measure. What's interesting about this statement is Allah says in the Quran, وَخَلَقْنَا كُلَّ شَيْءٍ And we created everything with مِقْدَارٍ with an amount. In fact, uh, I'll share with you something even more interesting. Whenever Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ The meaning of إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ The word Qadr means to determine. Qadr also means Qudrat, nature of something. إِنَّ اللَّهَ Indeed, Allah is over all things determined. Meaning Allah has power over all things. The other meaning of this ayah could be إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah has a number over everything, a determination to determine something. Like the qudra, the nature of something. Like miqdar, miqdar means the amount in Urdu. It's the same, qadara, qadara miqdar. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah, in another place, in Surah Al-Jinn, the last ayah of Surah Al-Jinn, وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَى كُلَّ شَيْءٍ عَدَدًا Ahsa, Allah has encircled everything in numbers. Allah says this in Quran. We have encircled everything in numbers, meaning the amount of everything is known to us. The universe is mathematics in a sense, right? Isaac Newton said, In the absence of any other proof, the thumb alone would convince me of God's existence. Meaning, if everybody knows the importance of the thumb in terms of evolution, uh, this is what he's referring to. Uh, everybody's heard of Max Planck, the Nobel Prize winner. He is the founder of quantum physics. Okay, He says, there can never be any real opposition between re religion and science, for the one is the complement of the other. Every serious and reflective, per reflective person realizes, I think, that the religious element is in, in his nature. It's that story element that I was talking about. It's in his nature and must be recognized and cultivated if all the powers of the human souls are to act together in perfect balance and harmony. And he continues on and on. Everybody heard of uh, Nik uh, Nikolai Telsa, the person who invented uh, 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 transistors and electricity and so on and so forth. He says, the gift of men men mental power comes from God, divine being. And if we concentrate our minds on the truth, we become in tune with this great power. Just to give a few more quotes, because I don't have time and then I want to go over the ayahs of the Qur'an. Uh, the Nobel Prize uh, physicist, uh, his name is Paul Derrick, he says, Those who say the study of science makes a man an atheist must be rather silly. Uh, another, uh, uh, if ever, anybody has heard of Wiesenberg, who discovered many uh, uh, phys physical laws of, of quantum physics, please come inside. He says, the first gulp from the glass of natural sciences will turn you into an atheist, but at the bottom of the glass, God is waiting for you. Um, I'll end with Charles Darwin. He says, when, when thus reflecting, I feel compelled to look at the first cause. Meaning, how did this all happen? First cause. Having an intelligent mind in some degree, analogous to that of man, and I deserve, I deserve to be called a theist, meaning I'm a, I, I believe in God. What is my point? Inshallah, I will continue in the second khutbah. أحمد وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفكه قولي آمين رب One of the fitans, one of the, you can say, trials the Muslims will face is that of the Dajjal, the Antichrist, and many of you have heard of this. But the Dajjal will be of three types. The Prophet ﷺ has used one word for Dajjal, Nasim al Dajjal, the person of Dajjal. There will be chaos in society, and that chaos will throw up one person. He will seem like a savior to humanity, but he will not be the savior of humanity. And he will pretend to be Jesus, peace be upon Which also tells us, by the way, that in the future, people are going to become more and more religious. This is a very important phenomenon that's taking place. People think it's only Islamic fundamentalism. People don't realize Hindus are becoming more Hindu fundamentalist. 
Christians are becoming more Jewish fundamentalist. Hindus, uh, uh, Jews are becoming more Hindu fundamentalist. I had a rabbi tell me like five, six years ago, she said that the neighborhood I was in was all atheist. Now when I go to Israel, she was talking about her home in Israel. She goes, the neighborhood we are in in Israel was all atheist. But she goes, now when I go there, they're all religious. Maybe all of you in your own lifetime have realized that when we were in America, it would be rare to see a sister in hijab outside. Right? But now, it's not that rare. It's becoming more and more common. So people are tending, as, as, as a reaction to not religion, we're moving towards religion. And not as whole humanity. The whole of humanity is becoming more religious. And everyone's going to have the same problems in their religion that we're having in our religion. It's just that our gravitational force is a little bit stronger in terms of movement than the others. Uh, I'm not going to go into details about this, but um, what I do want to mention is that we live in a time where, so one word the Prophet used for Dijjal is Musihu Dijjal. The, the second word the Prophet وسلم, used for Dijjal is Fitna to Dijjal, the Fitna. The Fitna means it will be a social corruption, meaning it will be a social phenomenon. And one of the things the Prophet ﷺ described the Jal with is that his eyes will be, he will be blind with one eye. He will be blind with one eye. He'll see with one eye, he can't see with the other eye. And in a way, and I'm not saying that this is exactly related to this, but I'm saying in a way, it would not be wrong to say that science as a whole has done the same thing. When it comes to God, it wants to blind itself. <laughs> When it comes to the idea of God, it's blind. It'll study everything with one eye. What I can see is real. If I can't see it, it's not real. This idea that nothing can exist outside the five senses. This idea that only that is real, that which... And by the way, this has to do with a subject in philosophy called epistemology, which, uh, if I just take a minute, I need to explain this because this will kind of like show you what I'm trying to say. Epistemology is the subject where you... What is real knowledge? What is real knowledge? What is real knowledge? Is it just the, what we get from our five senses? This is the real knowledge. But the Qur'an says, no. <laughs> those who believe in the unseen. Those who believe that there must be things beyond the five senses. Those who believe that there has to be a reality beyond the physical phenomenon. This is what Qur'an says, that epistemology cannot be based upon physical phenomenon alone, but there must be something beyond the physical phenomenon, and that is where you must get your whys from. How you can understand yourself with your observation. How does something happen? How do the blood cells work? But why is all this happening? Where are all these physical laws coming from? Let me not only mention this, but let me also mention, very quickly, that not only is the universe beautiful, but the laws that it's based upon are also beautiful. Do you know the definition of beauty? One of the definitions of beauty is that it is symmetrical. You know symmetry? If, if uh, something is the same as here and here, they're balanced. Balanced. Okay? If you look at, for example, and, and, and I'll tell you another, there's so much to say, but again, we're running out of time, so I have only a few minutes. But the universe is not only beautiful, but the laws it has is beautiful. For example, light. If light travels this way and this way, they're traveling symmetrically. It's equal this distance and this distance unless something stops it. The laws of this universe are also beautiful. And in not only that, I don't have time now, but when scientists, again, this has to do with human nature, have you read those laws that they make? You know, they write their laws of the laws of thermodynamics, they write it, music wrote it, it laws of motion. Do you know how much time the scientists care about writing their laws in a way that it rhymes? That there is a rhythm to the way that they're writing it, like poetry? Because it's not just about facts, it has to be beautiful. It has to sound beautiful. <coughs> You know, and, and uh, there's just so, so much more about the human element in, 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 in all of this. But the point I was trying to make is that we have to realize that the future generations, the world is going towards religion. The world is going back towards God. 
The world is going back towards God. And it is a misnomer to think that science rests on the shoulders of atheists. As I, I think, at least, I, I, can, I can get ten times more evidence if I wanted. But I think, you know, uh, for anybody who's talib al who desires to see the truth, is very clear. All, the, all of the scientists that I mentioned are big timers. The world rests on them. And these are all people who believed in God. It's a misnomer to think that if you're a scientist, you're not going to believe in God. It's the people that piggy bank on them that don't believe in God. Not the people that actually founded uh, the, uh, the, the, the ideas of science in itself. Anyone from Newton all the way to, uh, you know, uh, the, some of the latest science like Abdul Salam, the, the physicist, Muslim physicist, who won the Nobel Prize. Let's uh, do dua. And inshallah, I might continue this topic next time also, uh, depending upon the feedback I get. But I thought this would, would be good for the youth to listen to about this issue. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kina adhaab al-naq. Rabbana ghulamna anfusna wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kuna min al-khasirin. Allah matajal khilafat al-muslimin fi hadhihi al-ard. Rabbana ghulamna anfusna wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kuna min al-khasirin. اللهم تجعل القرآن ربي قلوبنا ونور صدورنا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد If you have not yet participated in the winter drive please do support us in the winter drive so that uh, you know we can do also a good deed that way أقيم الصلاة